Okay, Mike Benoit here again, and this is part three of our Tyranny Busters Sham and Shame of the Federal Income Tax. Today, or not today, but continuation, because it is the same day I did the other two, is uh, what is the subject of the so-called income tax? Now, this chapter four is a little bit different than what we covered earlier, because we were um, actually looking uh, earlier and uh, who was made liable. Now, what's the subject of the so-called income tax? And again, that's is it a tax on people, property, or activity? Uh, to make it easier, uh, direct taxes is a tax assessed on real estate as houses and lands. This comes out of the 1828 Webster. And so we know about no capitation or other direct tax and the uh, constitutional provision. The, the Stanton versus Baltic Mining Company, previous ruling it was settled that the provisions of the 16th Amendment conferred no new power. So again, what's the subject of the tax? People, property, or activities. We go down to um, the same taxes that are listed in Chapter 3, but here's one on gas guzzling. And uh, so, and it's amazing because this stuff is in the earlier chapters, but we're looking at a different thing. We're looking at who was made liable in Chapter 3. Now we're looking at uh, the, what's the subject of the tax. Here it says there is hereby imposed on the sale. Okay, so it's on an activity, on the sale by the manufacturer. Then you go on down to distilled spirits. There is hereby imposed on all distilled spirits. And if, it was, if they just said on all distilled spirits, that would be a property tax. But then they go on produced or imported in the United States. <coughs> so they're talking about an activity, an excise. Next one, uh, there's hereby imposed on all wine. Now, if they're just putting it on all wines, that's a tax on property. But, so like there's hereby imposed on income, like, you know, the confusion people get, there's hereby imposed a tax on the income. Here is imposed on all wine. So is it property that's the subject of the tax? Go further. It has to be. Uh, then it goes on. In bond, produced in, or imported into. So it's the activity. Even though we might be led to believe it's on the wines initially. It's on all wines imported. All wines produced in. You go on down the, the next one here. Is the tax hereby imposed on the transfer? So, uh, of the taxable estate. So it's act, the act of tr the transfer of the estate. It's the subject of the tax. It's an activity. And so therefore, therefore an indirect tax. But maybe going back to that one on the wine is a better example to do it again. Where it says, that's um, not so easy to, to find when you look back to things. But when it says there's a hereby imposed a tax on all wine, like there's hereby imposed a tax on income, but the, the wine thing goes on to produce in. So it's the activity. So all income earned from taxable activity. All right. So next one. There's hereby imposed on the first retail sale of any passenger vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. So it's imposed on the first real retail sale. That's an excise. Did you? Wager. This is a good one, you know, gambling, I guess, wagers. There shall be imposed on any wager authorized under the law of the state in which accepted an excise tax equal to any wager for the activity of a wager. 
imposed on any wage activity. Then you go back to the income tax thing here. Hereby imposed on the taxable income. All right. So if it was hereby imposed on the wine imported, uh, distilled, taxable income of what activity? Or are they want us to think this is a direct tax? What activity produces taxable income? And is the value of the labor or the capital considered income? All right. So maybe enough on that. Maybe we can finish this. Well, we know how your status of being classified as a taxpayer began. You signed the forms. You told them. And maybe... Uh, what can you do to end that? Eh, maybe you should get to read the book. It's not all going to be all that easy. Chapter 6. What's it, what does the IRS have to do to assess and collect taxes if you don't file? Alright, well, well, the secretary is authorized and required to make the inquiry, determination, and assessments of all taxes, including interest additional amounts, additions to the tax, and assessable penalties imposed by the title or occurring under any form of internal revenue law, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, taxes shown on the return. It's easy for the secretary to assess taxes from a return you make, as you flatly state that you are subject to the tax, uh, and you state the amount. So, but what if you... Don't tell them anything. Then how are they going to go about and assess the tax on you? And so you get into also wanting to know, um, you know, the idea, of, you know, people that are taxpayers are subject to all the rules in the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, people that aren't certainly wouldn't be subject to the rules because uh, if you're not subject or liable for an Internal Revenue Code tax, then the rules don't apply to you, right? All right, so the method of the assessment shall be made by recording the liability of the taxpayer. So if you're not someone subject to liable for the tax, they can only assess taxes on people that are the taxpayer. Uh, again, I don't expect this all to unwind for you real quickly and easily. Uh, I spent 20,000 hours studying this stuff and then it didn't unwind that easily, but some of it is just basic. Uh, where have you been made subject or liable for an internal revenue code tax? And even though the, the code is so voluminous, you can still find it online and do keyword searches. Um, so, again, this chapter goes into things like notice and demand for tax and liens for taxes, notice and opportunity for hearing upon the notice of lien, fair collection practices. But again, all of these kinds of things come into play when you are someone that is actually subject to or liable for a tax. And reading the book here, uh, even though this book is short, small, condensed, it may take you several hours to sit there and to digest it, uh, far more than what's happening here. There's things in the book about uh, notices of levy and uh, what has to happen for that to occur, etc. More things. But I think we're just kind of finishing this off. And uh, last chapter here is, uh, goes into what happens if I'm indicted on criminal charges and it has anyone won against the IRS on tax matters. And so it gives you a little bit of information there. Of course, yes, a lot of people have won. And, uh, you know what, the, the simple thing to sum, to sum all of this up is, uh, well, where are you made liable for this tax? And if they can't show you and produce that, or if they can't tell you if it's a tax on, you know, an excise, indirect or direct tax, a tax on people or property or activity, they should be able to tell you that, right? That would be pretty simple, pretty basic. And then you have a reference point to go for. But... 
that something that's clear is not existing. And that, in fact, at, you know, for every one of us, there's a point where we start to question it. If you're at the point where they're taking 30%, maybe you don't question it. 40%, start to 50, 60, 70. But if they can take 1% of what you earn, what you exchange your labor for, then do you own your labor? Or do they? So, I think um, that kind of sums it up here. You can get a copy of this, study it more, because uh, some of this is a little bit hard to just sit there and talk about on a video and, and make it clear. You have to kind of think your way through it, work your way through it. So, this is your tyranny busters, the sham and shame of the federal income tax. Uh, in closing, we talk a little bit about how a people can be considered a free people when the government owns their labor. And how this kind of tyranny can keep going on is maybe quite simple because what happens is many people benefit by it. <coughs> they get, um, what do you call, uh, tax credits and they're not really paying taxes. Or they get welfare and they want to support it. Or they're, if they're very rich, they're kind of like the overseers. And if they do pay some taxes, and they pass it on, the cost of funds are us. Uh, the standard of living and technology has made our life so much easier. So people go, even though they're taking 30 or 40 percent from me, uh, our lives are so much better than it was 100 years ago. So somehow they associate this tax slavery with uh, a better existence, a better system of life. Anyway, I've got several websites. You go to michaelbenoit.net. Or Mike Benoit.net, that's my um, congressional site. PBJ, freedomfellowship.org, charitybusters.org, and of course, Michael Benoit 7, a YouTube video. Thanks today, and uh, we'll come up with something interesting for you uh, shortly. Thank you very much.